Hello, my friends, and today we're going to talk about something a little different. I'm not sure how great this video will do, but honestly, I'm doing this to talk about the things I'm passionate about, and this is one of those little things that just really has me peeved. Actually, an awful lot. It, this pisses me off to no end. Something people may not know about me is I enjoy d and I enjoy tabletop gaming in general, but I've been playing D&D since I was probably about eight years old, and that's, uh, that's a long time. I'm not exactly a spring chicken here. I have D&D books from the 80s. I have the 1.0 books. I have the 2.0 books. I have the 3.0 books. I'm missing the 3.5. I even have 5e, even though I don't really play it. So I, I have dragon magazines that are older than I am because I love D&D. So when I, when I ran across this piece of news, it really, really pissed me off for a number of reasons. So first we're going to read this article and we're going to get to go discuss a couple other things and we'll see where we end up. WizKids Mini reveals the truth about the 1980s D&D character. A D&D Mini from the upcoming 50th anniversary WizKids release reveals the identity of the Red Box Warrior, a mysterious fighter from iconic art piece. WizKids is creating a miniature that reveals new information about one of the oldest D&D characters, though you might never even have thought of the them as a character before. It's a warrior from the front cover of the 1983 Red Box, only ever glimpsed from behind, seen facing off a powerful red dragon. This is our first proper look at the character, and according to WizKids' interpretation, it's a girl. This D&D mini is one of a huge number of models found in WizKids' upcoming D&D Icons of the Realms, 50th Anniversary Booster Boxes, celebrating the tabletop RPG's 50th birthday. The collection has a bunch of minis that celebrate classic arts from the series, like a paladin and Fiend from the AD&D front cover. It also has tons of both modern and classic interpretations of recognizable D&D monsters. Since the character, who, if we had to guess at their class, is probably a D&D barbarian or a 5e fighter and how could it be a 5e fighter? Explain. No, you know what? I'm going to finish this. Has never been seen from the front before. Their true identity has always been unknown. It's likely most players in 1983 assumed they were a man. But as our own Tim Linward puts it, there's nothing particularly gendered about long hair and tight calves. As you can see, from behind, the model is a near-perfect match for the original artwork by Larry Elmore. I'm put in mind of the original Metroid game, also from the 1980s, which revealed at the end that the badass protagonist had been a woman the entire time. <gasps> Mm. WizKids told ComicBook.com, who originally revealed the model, that it had made a clear and deliberate choice to present the Red Box Warrior as female. The company might be expecting some controversy around the decision, given, for instance, the way certain corners of the internet recently kicked off about the possibility of female adeptus custodies. But even if we didn't have that current example, it's just the way the internet is, i.e. horrible, isn't it? My God. However, I'm of the view that there isn't going to be much of a ruckus here. At the end of the day, the identity of the nameless, faceless warrior of this old D&D book is probably not something many Dungeons & Dragons fans have given much thought to, at least not recently. So there are likely no preconceived notions that have been shattered. No gates here to keep, if you will. This article is really making me angry. Shut up setting or not, it's a cool little Easter egg in a miniature set absolutely stuffed full of Easter eggs and references. The WizKids Icons of the Realm's 50th Anniversary set is available to pre-order from its store now and expected to release in July 2024. Now, you see here, this is from Larry Elmore, fantasy artist. I recently was asked a question about the ancient red painting I did for the cover of the Red Box edition. Did you paint a male or female? It's a man. Gary didn't know what he wanted. All he wanted was something simple that would jump out at you. He wanted a male warrior. If it was a woman, you would know for I'm pretty famous for painting women. For this specific painting, while I hide the face of the warrior so it's anonymous, it was painted as a man. You can interpret it however you want, for that is the magic of art, but I'm answering the question that was asked without context. Now, the dragon, on the other hand, is an ancient red dragon. Just to be clear, the thing that I love about D&D was that anyone could be anything in this game. Male, female, both, neither, it doesn't discriminate. It's a game of imagination, and you can be and do whatever you want. So there was never any mystery about what the character was. The character is a man. Always has been. The idea that they need to stuff a woman in. If they wanted a woman, there are so many that they could have picked from. From the books 
from the from stories from the modules more than i can even remember the names of I, i'm angry i can't remember anything you can see here neon says the warrior on the cover of the dungeons and dragons red fox is a man baby per the artist himself larry elmore stop retconning stop gaslighting fans there is no issue with making new characters but this ain't and they don't even need to make new characters here you have yo dano who is known for posting dragonlance art on various other things he calls himself a dragonlanceologist he has here i don't understand at WizKid games for great female mini you could have given a selena Iglewill, drelzna kitara takisus or countless others but this just seems awkward and forced also mr elmore is nonplussed here you have a different uh, post from larry it says it's a man gary didn't know what he wanted all he wanted was something simple that would jump out at you he wanted a male warrior if it was a woman you would know it for i'm pretty famous for painting women there was never a question in all these years about the male warrior. No one thought it was a female warrior. Whoever thought it was a female warrior is quite crazy and do not know what they are talking about. This is stupid. I painted it. I should know. And, and there he is saying it even more succinctly. It's stupid. He painted it. He knows. Bronwyn, softcore game girl here, actually has a excellent take on it. She said, as I'm going to throw my two cents in at this one, because I see a lot of men getting dragged for it. Some didn't say it the best way. If the artist says it's a man, it's a man. The reason people are upset about the gender swap is that it was unnecessary. And here you see a picture of the original original sketch with extra characters involved. There are lots of female characters to choose from. There's even one in the original art as well. Hell, I would take pre-training Tika wielding a fucking frying pan over them changing a character just to create controversy. And don't think that's not exactly why they did it. It is absolutely exactly why they did it. Here is the original art. Looking at that, absolutely nothing says female to me. I don't know about you, I, but it's so easy to just ask. And it's been the same thing for ages. Why so Suddenly decide to make this a man when you could have done something with any one of these women. Right here. Four women in a picture. You have Lorana Kanan, Tika Waylon Majir, Silvara, and Usha Majir. Why why not make a picture out of or, or an, a mini out of any one of these? Why not make a mini out of all four with the goddamn blue dragon? Any good reason? Because I can't think of a good reason. Other than you are a lazy asshole who has absolutely no idea about D D while pretending you have an idea about D D. There there is no, no good reason here. And it, it incenses me to say the absolute least. So many amazing hobbies out there. So much great stuff that you can go into. D&D &D is one of the few that are so easily adapted to whatever worldview you have. You don't have to follow the books. The books say in the books, you do not have to follow this exactly. You are the creator of your own world. So if you want to have a white wheelchair or if you want to be a half man, half woman, if you want to be whatever, you can do that. Now, you can't do that at every table because every table is different and it's meant to be. It's the way the game is designed. There are a lot of things that if I heard was in the game, I wouldn't play at your table. There's a lot of things that I'm sure people wouldn't like that I enjoy in d and I happen to like role, a balance between role play and, and combat. I don't like it to be too heavy either way. Some people like to kill everything. Some people want to do nothing but role play. Some people are a little overly sexual. That's a little weird. Anybody can play d and if they want to. Yes, there is gatekeeping involved, but that gatekeeping should be, you know, here are the source books. Now, if you want something different, go make it yourself. You don't have to be in the source books because you can do whatever you want. I don't know when society got so uptight that they couldn't think a little bit on their feet, be so more, a little more creative on their own. You can make up whole worlds of whatever you want, but you want somebody else's idea to cater to you. You can't do it yourself. That's all I hear anymore is that you can't do it yourself and you want everybody else to do it exactly your way too. All right. Well, this has just been a, a quick little rant for me. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree, if you think I'm overreacting, if you like tabletop games. Uh, anybody want to invite me to a game of Call of Cthulhu? I've always wanted to play that. Never had a chance. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Uh, if you really liked it, you can feel free to share it around, and I will catch you later.